Sometimes it's helpful to make precise measurements of a graph, and in order to do that we can use cursors. So let me show you a quick demonstration of that. Over here on the left we have a full wave power supply circuit, and on the right hand side we have a graph, and we have two cursors that have been placed there. When I run the graph, when I run the simulation, initially we don't see anything on the graph. So you might think that nothing is going on, but actually what's happening is that we're just zoomed in very, very far and we can't see what's happening. You can see over here on the left hand side, the graph only goes from 2 millivolts to 3 millivolts. So we're zoomed way in. So what we want to do to start off with is we want to zoom out. To do that, I can use the left scroll wheel while I hover over the left hand axis here. Um, I, I should say the scroll wheel on the mouse while I hover over the left hand axis. So when I roll the scroll wheel back, now I'm zooming out. Now we're going from minus 600 millivolts to 300 millivolts. So we've zoomed out, but we haven't zoomed out far enough to see what's happening yet. So I can keep on rolling back, and now I can see a line, but right now it just looks like a straight line and I can't see any detail. So what I want to do is I want to zoom in on that line. So I'm going to hover my mouse over that line and then use the scroll wheel again and roll inward this time. Okay, so now I'm getting closer, but the line is up kind of near the top of the graph. I'd like it to be closer to the middle. So I can click here and drag this down towards the middle. Clicking on that left axis allows me to drag that axis where I want. And then I can keep scrolling in to zoom in on that axis. So now I'm seeing it much more clearly. I can also use the scroll wheel on the bottom axis to zoom in the horizontal direction. Now this is zooming in just like you would zoom in with a camera. Okay, When you're using a camera, you can zoom out to see more of your picture, or you can zoom way in to see one thing up close. But you're not actually changing what you're looking at, you're just changing the way that you're looking at it. The same thing goes for this graph. I'm zooming out to see more of the signal, or zooming in to see one piece, but I'm not changing the signal itself, I'm only changing the way that I look at it. Okay. So now that I've got a clear picture of the signal on my screen, I can use the cursors to make a precise measurement of that signal. So I can drag this cursor around and when I do that I can see some numbers changing down here on the bottom. So um, this is labeled C1 for cursor 1 and when I move that I can see the, um, the numbers for cursor 1 changing. All right? So the uh, the numbers down here indicate the time and the voltage where this cursor is touching my graph. So if I move it over here to the left, I can see that voltage going up and the time going down. So I might be interested in the peak voltage, for instance. So I can move that cursor so that it's up at the top of my signal, and then I can move my other cursor so that it's at the very bottom of my signal. So now you can see the voltage for cursor 1 and the voltage for cursor 2. Okay, So if I wanted to find the peak to peak voltage, I could just manually subtract one of these from the other. But as a convenience, the program does that for you automatically. So that's shown over here under delta y. This little triangle is actually the Greek letter delta and that stands for difference. So this is the difference in the y values between cursor 1 and cursor 2. So you can see here it's about 17 millivolts. So there's about 17 millivolts from the top of my signal to the bottom of my signal. Okay. If I wanted to measure the frequency or the period of my signal, I could move the cursor one cursor to the top of one signal and then the other cursor to the top of the next signal. And then down here I can look at 
delta x. That's the difference in the x position from one cursor to another. Now x represents time, so this is the difference in time between one cursor and the next. So here it says 501 microseconds, so that's about half of a millisecond, and that's the period. Remember the period is the time that it takes for one complete cycle of the signal to occur. So the, it takes about half of a millisecond for that cycle to happen. And if I wanted to find the frequency, frequency is just one divided by the period. So I could calculate that on a calculator. But again, the, the program does that automatically. So one divided by delta x is one over the period. And we said that's the formula for the frequency. So right here, the program has calculated the frequency for you. And you can see that's about 2 kilohertz. So when you have a period that's about half a millisecond, the frequency is about 2 kilohertz. And that's how you can use cursors to make precise measurements of a signal.